The girl was just about to go to sleep. Suddenly her blanket was pulled open. She sat her day up with a start to check. It turned out to be her real father coming over. Jane rushed to ask what was going on. But her father not only did not answer, but also kept staring at her body. Jane's tears of fear came straight from her eyes. How could her father, who had always been so kind and affectionate, have become like this? Jane was about to close her eyes when her father turned around and left her barefooted. Leaving her lying on the bed in shock, Jane's fear was unsettled for a long time. But the next day something even stranger happened. Her mother was making breakfast. Mary, the eldest daughter, came over to talk to her. But her mother kept chopping vegetables and didn't respond to her at all. Jane was still sitting in her chair in a daze. She was thinking about what happened last night. Just then her father came over and Saturday next to Jane with great joy. He was joking with Jane. It was as if nothing had happened last night. Jane was so angry that she got up and walked out of the house. Her father was very confused, but didn't know what was going on. But then her mother brought her breakfast and slammed it down on the dining room table. Then she picked up the vegetables on her plate and ate the food in big bites. It was as if she hadn't eaten in months. This series of strange actions of the mother scared the rest of the table. The youngest son, Jack, just finished a bite of the food and said it was very salty and spit it out. However, the mother grabbed the food and opened her mouth and shoved it in. She chewed the food. Ignoring her husband's cries, the mother then held the food out to Jack and told him to eat it quickly. Jack shook his head in fear. She suddenly became angry when he didn't respond. She overturned the dinner plate and other things on the table. She shouted frantically, Why don't you eat her food? Jack was scared and cried on the spot. The others were too shocked to speak. Jack kept begging and pleading to get his mother to calm down. However, in the evening, his wife was acting normal again and laughing as usual. But when Sam asked her about the morning's events, she didn't know anything. She even said she had an appointment with a friend that morning and didn't stay at home at all. Meanwhile, Mary was in the bathroom taking a shower. But then something even more bizarre happened. The girl was taking a shower in the bathroom. Suddenly she felt someone peeping at the door. Then she goes to wipe the fog off the glass. Her twin sister suddenly appeared and startled her. But what was even stranger was that her sister was staring grimly at her body. Suddenly she jerked her face to the glass and she said she would take everyone in the house with her. Then she turned away with an evil smile. Mary wondered why her sister had become like this. But what she didn't expect was Mary got dressed, found her sister and asked her why she had just done that. But Jane said she hadn't left the room tonight. She didn't know what Mary was talking about. Jane then pulls her into her room and asks Mary to sleep with her tonight. Mary asked her why she was doing this. Jane said that her father had burst into her room last night and she was too scared to sleep. However, Mary didn't believe her. But as soon as she said that, her father really pushed in the door. The two sisters were so frightened that they backed away. Then the father picked up a knife and slowly approached the two sisters. At this critical moment, Mary stood up and pushed the father away, but she just dragged her sister out of the room. The father suddenly appeared in front of them with instantaneous movement. Then he grabbed Mary's hair and threw her downstairs. With a loud bang, Mary collapsed on the stairs. Jane screamed and ran away. However, instead of following her, her father turned around and went into the storage room. It took out a bigger hammer. Just then, Mary woke up from the stairwell. She limped around, looking for Jane. But when she turned around, she saw her father with a hammer. He wielded the hammer and was ready to hit Mary. Jane arrives just in time and smashes her father in the face with a pen. However, he stood unharmed in the same place. Then the father swung a hammer towards her quickly. Luckily Jane dodged in time. The hammer hit the door of the room. At that moment, her father's voice came from downstairs. The father in front of her heard the voice and dropped the hammer and turned away. The father, who was just downstairs, walked to the second floor. The two sisters had a frightened look on their faces and kept backing up. Sam did not know what game they were playing just as he was about to ask them what they were doing. His wife had picked up the hammer from the ground behind him. She slowly approached Sam with the hammer in her hand. Then without saying a word, she hit him with the hammer. Sam dodged and asked her why she was doing that, but his wife ignored his question. When she saw her two daughters cowering on the ground, she didn't hesitate to hit them with a hammer. Sam rushed forward to protect his daughters with his body. However, his wife continued to hit him with one hammer after another and ignored him. Sam then got up and tried to stop his wife. He was pushed to the ground by her. She looked at the frightened family in front of her. And then a wicked smile appeared on her face. Then she walked back to her room, satisfied. But even though her feet were pierced by glass shards, she felt no pain at all. Just as she closed the door, her voice came again from downstairs. 
This time, she walked up to the second floor in confusion and asked what had just happened. But Sam was scared and avoided her. So who was that woman just now? Sam opened the door and found no one in the room at all. Only the hammer was on the floor. Sam seemed to have realized something. He then called his brother because Sam's brother is a very powerful exorcist. John came to Sam's house as soon as he knew about the situation. After careful observation, John found out that one of the people in Sam's house was a demon. In order to avoid another accident, we decided to sleep together in the living room. But in the middle of the night, Jack got up to go to the bathroom. As a result, he just walked out of the living room. Behind him, there was another Jack with a knife in his hand and slowly walked into the living room. He raised the knife and stabbed the man in the forehead. But no matter how hard he stabbed, the knife was blocked by something. The boy had to turn around and leave. The next second, the man pretending to sleep opened his eyes. It turned out that he had expected all this. The next day, John called the boy's family. They saw what happened last night on the surveillance video. John said there was something unclean in the room and an exorcism was needed immediately. But John knew it would be difficult for him alone to get rid of the demon lying in his brother's house. So he called his master and asked him to come and help. At the same time, John told his brother to be careful with his daughter because there is something unclean in her. It turned out that John had secretly added holy water to the cup last night. Mary was the only one who dared not drink the water during their meal. John finished explaining things and then drove to pick up the master to come. However, when they were on their way back, a flock of crows rushed towards the car desperately. Suddenly the car lost control and ran straight through the guardrail. The people in the car and the car rolled down the cliff together. Sam saw that his brother had not returned late at night and became worried. He was afraid that the dirt inside his daughter would hurt his family again. So he knocked his daughter unconscious and tied her to the bed. Just then his brother, who had just been in a car accident, came back. He told Sam that his master had been killed in the accident. Now it was up to John to exorcise the demon alone. John then took the willow and whipped Mary hard. Mary screamed in pain and was bruised all over by the willow. Her mother was so distressed that she rushed forward to hug John. She begged John to stop, but instead of helping her, her husband confirmed that the devil had gotten to her. So he went up to his wife and grabbed her tightly by the neck. She tried desperately to break free, so she grabbed the glass bottle behind her and hit her husband in the head, but she was pushed against the wall by her husband and fainted on the spot. John saw this scene and suddenly let out a strange laugh. John was the real demon. Sam realized the truth and rushed to him, but was slapped to the ground just when the demon was about to kill him. The real John came back in time. He chanted an incantation in his mouth. Then the demon turned into smoke and dissipated. After Mary regained her freedom and clarity, she began to question her father about why he had done this to her. Sam was feeling guilty and came forward to apologize to her. John suddenly brought out the magic mirror. Mary revealed her true form after a scream. It turned out that she was the real demon at that moment. She knocked down the grown men with the swings of her hand. Just when the chaos was about to get out of hand, John pulled off the cross on his chest and chanted a spell under his breath. He wanted to imprison the demon inside his body. John then threw the cross to Sam and told him to hurry up and get rid of him so that the demon will be completely destroyed. But Sam just picked up the cross but hesitated to kill him. John took his brother's hand and inserted the cross into his body. In the end, John gave his life to destroy the demon forever. John succeeded in protecting all the people in his brother's family. Demons love to play with and torture humans. The film wants to show the thing is not limited to the traditional shock of exorcism. It is more about family relationships and ethics. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section. That's it for today's story. We'll see you next time.